Okay, so we're here with uh, Eric Dollard, and here's this old uh, Collins transmitter that was sitting out in the desert for years, and it's uh, up and running. And then right next to it, we have a light bulb uh, being lit up by the antenna output. Yeah. And then this is a tuning unit, which came out of one of these units over here. And this is four different ones for four different bands. I think that top one there is the one that it came out of <clears throat> in the low three megacycle range. And then we have a uh, voltmeter here on 10 volts AC being used as a uh, field meter. Yeah. Okay, and you got a light bulb. So what are, what so are we what doing here? What this thing does is it takes the low impedance unbalanced and converts it to a high impedance balanced. So that's a lot of power. It's actually overloading this lamp. So that's its primary purpose is a single phase to two phase transformer. Because the whole Tesla transformer is going to be balanced. It has to everything has to be two phase. There can't be any neutral. So the Collins transmitter, this coax is coming out of the back. This is where an antenna would hook to? Yeah. Basically, the Collins is just a source of alternating current. Right now, the alternating current frequencies, dial's not, uh, well, I could probably interpolate it. But at any rate, it's about 3 and uh, 3, 4, 5, 3 .45 megacycles. Okay. And that antenna output is in parallel. Well, this is, uh, we'll once this bulb. thing's tuned, then this comes out. That's just a dummy lug for tuning. Okay. And fine-tune it. So Jeff, Jeff built this little chassis for the unit that's already set for the uh, frequency range we need. Okay, so it's putting out pretty good right now. It's putting out about a thousand volts or more. And that's what we want. To zoom in on that spark here. Go ahead. So the difficulty was getting it balanced. The circuit was not designed for balanced operation. At any rate, when you get something for free, it's never right. But uh, I tapped the coil. I got it close to the spot. Not really desirable to do this, but this one's off a little bit. So that converts it from a balanced to unbalanced. So the RF from the transmitter comes into the uh, primary coil inside, just taps on it, so you can adjust its inductance switch in the okay. front. Where's the primary? It's right on. inside there. Okay. But the coil in this case is off to one side, which is undesirable, so I had to kind of put a balancing thing in there to establish a neutral point, because it just went quarter wave. This just was nothing, and this was hot. That defeats the whole purpose, so, so this is the secondary coil, so once I found a place to put a neutral, then um, then it magnetic field will equalize itself out. And then the tuning capacitor is here. Okay. So basically, it's the same thing that was in the military box, except now it's a, it's a bench model. And then when it's finalized, then it goes into the tuning unit in the RF rack. But right now, it's just going to be this be, rack right here. It's just going to be used as an <coughs> exciter for the um, the high impedance half of the extra coil. I guess I should get the extra coil diagrams okay. once you get those, and then I'll point that out. So here's a diagram of a uh, side view of the extra coil assembly. This is a potential coil and this is a current coil and all together this makes up uh, an extra coil. So this is not a primary and secondary. The whole thing is an extra coil. And on so you can see the stand right here and there'll be two of these setups. And then here's the potential coil diagram. These are full size. In other yeah, words, this to is scale. The size they'll be the one to one scale. So this is seven and a quarter inches. 
and this is four inches in diameter and then this is five and three quarters for the current coil which is the, the large diameter short one and then uh, six inches diameter and the end plates are going to be these HDPE uh, discs which will have a bigger hole cut in the middle and then eight holes all the way around it on each one uh, where G10 or FR4 rods will be inserted from end plate to end plate and they will be threaded so that um, we can wind uh, the wire on those and the FR4 material is the same stuff as a standard uh, like a green circuit board kind of material um, the potential coil this has a skinnier wire and we're using this uh, Teflon coated this PTFE stranded wire 18 gauge you can get this kind of stuff from PowerWorks and each one of these potential coils will have uh, looks like about 30 turns and then the current coil this one is going to have uh, 18 gauge wire eight, of no, eight uh, sorry eight, 8 gauge wire 15 turns now this stuff is already insulated and then for this one it's getting harder to find a 8 gauge insulated enamel coated magnet wire so we're using 8 gauge bare wire and then once it's wound we're going to paint it with a couple layers of uh, super corona dope which is a xylene based um, dielectric to uh, help uh, coat and insulate it okay yeah and then this is going to when these get built then one goes to one phase this phase here and then another one goes to this phase here which are in opposition and then we find the frequency so does that mean these are 180 degrees out yeah. of phase so yeah. they're they're alternating right now yeah. back and forth a and B, phase a and b so against the ground so one terminal is going to feed one extra coil setup and the other phase is going to feed the well, right other now, right extra now, coil just setup a potential coil just a potential yeah. coil that's the first step now the interesting thing about it is that there is no primary or secondary no. here and you had mentioned several times on some of the calls, maybe even in your uh, Tesla presentation, that um, instead of even needing a primary and secondary, because a lot of people will look at this and think this is like a primary and secondary, yeah, it's not. but it's not. No. This whole thing is one coil, right. which is an extra coil. And Eric has been saying you can completely uh, eliminate the primary and secondary and you feed it straight to the extra coil because that's what's doing the work anyway. Right. And that's what we're going to be proving and demonstrating with this yeah, setup. we're not going to... There'll be some tank circuits somewhere for the tubes, but if, if, if we can accomplish it, there will not be magnet. Nothing can be magnetically coupled to this. It really should operate by itself. You don't want to lug it down with primaries and secondaries. You have to series one wire feed it. That's the way it wants to run. And that's a very low impedance, very high current, low voltage. Mm -hmm. Now you, and then you mentioned with two extra coil setups if the potential coil is facing out and there was another one here where the uh, the potential coil was also facing out that's optimum for what type of demonstration well that produces that kind of sol solenoidal dielectric field okay for fooling around with the field around the thing okay and, and it's a very suitable arrangement for making sparks so okay. on one end you have a one disc capacitor plate that you adjust to the capacitance of the arc and on the other phase you have the arc and then that's it's fine this is a very this is a pretty good spark making geometry those yeah. the coils now are, are not short and flat but they're they're longer and skinnier impedance is higher okay and then if you took these and you aim the potential coils at each other and the current coils are on the outside yeah then it then becomes the focal type of dielectric field with that neutral in between in between right yeah. so that's the cosmic induction generator yeah. demo with the bulbs right. and the, with the bulb or whatever right. goes in there really don't know until you start doing it mm -hmm. so we'll have these coils built here uh, pretty quick we pretty much have everything and what we don't is on the way and so once these are put together, we can test it with this low power yeah, setup. So the, the, the high impedance coil will be tested with this, but then when the things all end, and the low impedance one will be tested 
This one will be tested. But when they go together, then we have to have a step-down transformer. That's what the ferrite cores are for. Okay. We have to step the 50 ohm impedance out of this down to one half ohm impedance. So it's going to look like a current transformer. Okay. Um, any other comments you can think of about this arrangement? No, that's it for now. Okay. What's that? Actually, overloading the lamp. The neon one? And this is. Yeah, the transmitter is putting out about, probably putting about 75 watts into this tube. And then. You're going to do the argon on camera real quick? Yeah, that, well, that doesn't show up too well. But. Is that argon? Yeah. Argon or maybe hydrogen. Looks more like argon. Hydrogen's pinker. There's some neon in it too. Got a pretty good balance. Okay, let me, I'm going to turn the light off real quick. So I can't see the terminals. Light up a little late. A well, cigarette lighter. One of my uses. Right, here we go, I got it. Except I can't see with one eye. There we go. Getting hot. And try this big long one? Yeah. They're kind of recessed little. Okay, you're going to have to shine something on the terminal, so I got to go all the way back for this. Okay. Uh -huh. Whoa. Yeah. Full, oh my God. Huh? Power. Full whole power. Here, hold on, I got to get a photograph of that. So as you're putting that on, this is... Okay, and then I can load up into... I can actually optimize into whatever... I can get the full transmitter power into any one terminal gaseous discharge light. It's full power, and uh, actually it's up to a bit here, it's overloaded. So this is close to the whole Rife range. Zero out. Tuning on this thing's really critical. There we go. Let's go that way. Yeah, it's operating much more efficiently now. It takes a lot of experimenting to get these concatenated tuned circuits all lined up. Because there's all kinds of different combinations. Okay, so what's the next project? Wind the coil? Yep. Make. Wind the high impedance watt pair and hook them up. See what frequency it lands on.
voltage isn't that high, but the current is. That's why it's making such a big arc. See, the starting distance is about a thousand volts. But boy, it's got some current behind it. So it's about 100 watts or so. Hold the end. You need to hold the end? Yeah. Don't touch the terminals though, they'll burn you. Just hold. Okay, and I'll let go. You got stable? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of it's a little big for it. Let's try the other six foot one, seems to be the optimum. Okay, got it? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Hold it for a second. Okay, so try to get here and, and take it. Now let me do the tuning. Okay, now I'm going to optimize. I can feel that when you change it. Yeah. It seems to be about maximum. So, it's about the same as it was before. Yeah. Let me, let me go back to the wand. Put this in a temporary, maybe on that shelf over there. Mm-hmm.